All right, so for the business announcement, um, I have only one announcement and it's about uh, the open house. We have open house next month on the 13th. And it's a great opportunity to invite your colleagues if they have you know, the same goal of public speaking and uh, and you know the normal goals of the Toastmasters. So please invite them, um, market this event, um, try to get them to attend. And we will also send out um, some flyers, uh, I think sometime this week, if not next week. So just keep in mind that we have open house next month. Other than that, I don't have any other business announcement, but I would like to open it to our officers if they have anything to announce. Nope. All right. Well, with that, I will have- I think Eva does. Eva, I think I see oh, you hang up. I was trying to raise my hand. <laughs> so I just have a little update. It, there's a Pathways Q&A session next Tuesday as part of the district-wide training. So if anyone has any questions on Pathways, this is your opportunity to come and ask. We have both time dedicated for just general Pathways and then for any of the officers, there is a Basecamp Manager version as well. So really excited about that. I, I will be getting my level four project Q&A done at this time. So if anyone wants to just come and be on the Q&A session to support me, I do need at least one Toastmaster from our club to come just to check it off that I did it, but I can figure that out otherwise. Just come if you have any questions. There's always trainings every Tuesday. It's our district training Tuesday. So look on the calendar because there's some really great things coming up. Ava, I don't know if this is just me or if it's others, but is, do other people hear static from Ava? Is it like popping or static? Or is it just me? All right, it's just me. It's Ignore fine. it. Yeah, but okay. we're fine. Okay, okay. So, don't worry about it. it. <laughs> hey, Ava, uh, what I would like to suggest is uh, if you can send out email with the same details, I think um, the people who are not in the meeting right now, they might also get this information and that will help you to get more attendance. Awesome. Uh, so with that, I would like to hand it over to Veronica. Hey, everyone. Sorry, I already just started pinging me all of a sudden, but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Share screen one. Um, okay, so props to and shout out to Akil for stepping up. He will be our timer and awards for today. We were looking for someone to do that. Uh, quick announcement. I was not here last week to make this announcement, but we have merged the roles of timer and awards. So even though it may not show on the, on the sign-up sheet yet, if you do sign up for a timer or a words position, just know that you're signing up for both. It's kind of like an all-inclusive package. Uh, great experience to be more mindful about time and then great experience to also track of uh, who's, who, who, who we like best table topics, best speeches. Um, and yeah, now for the following weeks, um, next spot available, if you would like to make a speech, will be May 27th. So this spots tend to feel rightly um, quick. So if you if there is a week where you're like, oh man, like I wish I could really like do a speech then that we always have the backup speaker and then the speakers do drop out from time to time. So feel free to put your name on the backup speaker. And if not, just sign up with like ahead of time. Like, um, you know, like um, I've signed up even like all the way for June. Uh, just be mindful also that between speeches, you want to leave at least four weeks. Um, in terms of roles, for next week, we are looking for an evaluator to evaluate she told speech, and we're also looking for a general evaluator, and, um, oh, no, that's it. Yeah, general evaluator and evaluator, because Allison will be doing both awards. Let me put this in here, since we've merged those two. And those are all my announcements. So, yes, if you would like to register, I'll put the link on the chat. And if you have any questions about the roles, just let me know. Uh, hey, Veronica, where can I find that sheet? Uh, I did not see it on the invite. Uh, Which... Kiel, I will. I will send you. Um, it should be on the um, Teams. invite. 
uh, okay. from me, it should be the um, to sign up for roles and speeches. It's right oh, underneath the Zoom. And oh, I yeah. feel, Got are it. you part of our of our teams? Uh, yes, okay. I I think I just became part last week. So awesome! So there is a tab called signups, and you you will see my name every day, every week popping up. Veronica will do you has posted something. It's usually just letting everybody know what roles are available as well, and then I usually put the link in there as well. And then Pablo okay. just posted it on the chat. Thanks, Pablo. All right, thank you. And also make an announcement for our um, guest here that would like that eventually will join once you're part of the team. All of the instructions on how to perform each role and the resources you need will be in the teams. But we can connect one off once you join to go over that. Or like your first time doing a role, I'm happy to walk coach you through how to do it. Sounds good. All right, Chital, are you ready for me to go ahead and start? Yes, please. All right. So I am the Toastmaster for today, and I would like to welcome everyone uh, to the meeting. And I want to go ahead and start introducing some roles. The first one is going to be our Timers Award, which is going to be Akil. Akil, um, we're actually doing something a little bit different. Um, could you put like timer in front of your name? Uh, we had um, some confusion um, a few times where people forgot who the timer was. And so going forward, we're always going to ask the timer to rename themselves as timer, just so that everybody uh, doesn't get confused as to who that person is. Uh, and Akil, I um, will gi give you a little bit of time to introduce your role. Okay. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Akhil. I'll be timer and uh, doing the awards today. Uh, I think uh, I, I will just probably just need instructions on how long the speeches are timed for. Uh, that is something I am not very clear at the moment. So Doug, do you know that? Uh, I know that uh, Pablo's giving his icebreaker. So that's going to be four to six minutes. And Ava, I'm assuming yours is five to seven minutes. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. So it. it's, yeah. Uh, and Ava goes first. So Ava's going to be five to seven minutes and then Pablo's four to six minutes. All right. Uh, we are moving on to Topics Master. Uh, Veronica, uh, tell us what we're going to be talking about today. Yes. Sorry. I'm trying to have like bites in between. <laughs> um, okay. Camera. Oh, okay. So quick sneak. Um, Review, everybody's gonna be a salesperson today. That's what I'm gonna say. And then you will have one minute to make a pitch. And um, you can go from that minute, you can go 30 seconds, sorry, a minute over. Is it one minute or one minute and a half? I, I blinked on that. You, yeah, to go over, it's actually, it's, so it's one to two minutes mm -hmm. with a 30 second buffer. There you go. So you have one to two minutes to make a pitch, uh, a sales pitch. That's all I'm gonna say for now. All right. Our general evaluator is going to be Brian Thrasher. Would you like to introduce your role today? Sure. I'll be leading the second half of the meeting, introducing our other evaluators and giving an overview evaluation of how I felt the meeting went. All right. And I'd like to introduce our grammarian. That would be me. Hey, how are you doing? Thank you. Uh, our word for the day is going to be quintessential. Now, I was actually looking up another word, but then when I was reading the definition for it, I like stumbled across this word and I realized I've heard this word I don't know how many times but I didn't actually know what it meant. Uh, quintessential means perfectly typical or representative of a particular kind of person or thing. Uh, a good example would be, this is the quintessential Los Angeles restaurant, casual, but not frumpy, lively, but not overheated. Or it could also, quintessential could be, um, I'll read it, uh, something that is typically part of or a pure example. So uh, an example of that, the quintessentials, ketchup, brown sugar, vinegar, and mustard. The characteristics classic American barbecue sauce can be found in this dish. So in other, in other words, the quintessential, you, know, you could say like, she is the quintessential stay at home mom. You know, she has 
for kids. She does all of the things that you would expect a stay-at-home mom to do. So hopefully that uh, makes sense. Uh, if not, feel free to look it up and uh, get some more definitions. And last, we are going to have uh, two speakers today. The first one is going to be Ava, and the second one is going to be Pablo. Ava, are you ready to go? Her computer is frozen. I'm guessing it's still frozen. Ava, you're on mute. She's... Yeah. Okay. Um, so so Ava... Swap. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's still... Pop. Okay. Am I back? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you. you are. I can hear you. Okay, then yes. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Okay, I wanted to make sure that we weren't going to, uh, we were going to do a quick swap if you hadn't, but that's fine. We're going to go ahead and I'll uh, introduce you now. Ava is giving her introduction into Toastmasters mentoring speech, which will finish level two of her motivational strategies path. This is the second time Ava has completed this project and she is excited, excited to share about additional <laughs> people in her life and who has helped her to become who she is today. Let's welcome Ava and her speech titled, For Good. I've heard it said that people come into our lives for a reason, bringing something we must learn. And we are led to those who help us most to grow if we let them and help them in return. Stephen Swartz, Wicked, a new musical, from the song, For Good. Thank you, Master Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters, honored guest. I 100% believe that this lyric is true. I've had people come into my life that brought something to the table that I could learn from and use to grow. There have some that have been official mentors, ones that have a designated title with exact roles and responsibilities. But there have been others like family, friends such as Wicked, coworkers, even peers that I've been able to learn from with or without that official title. In my life, I have some people I go to depending on the situation I find myself in. I call these people Schmooze, subject matter mentors. And they help me in that particular area. For example, I go to Chris on my team when I find myself in one of those sticky work situations when I don't know whether to push back, escalate, or just do the work. And I can trust that whatever I tell him is not going to get spread around the office. He is there to guide me and support me. And oftentimes I come to him unsure of what I should do. And he tells me to trust my instincts. He's constantly building up my confidence and giving me that capability that I can go succeed. We've developed a relationship of mutual trust where I can tell him my problems, but he can also share with me what he's going through. And together we can figure out problems and come up with solutions. It's a great example of a mutual beneficial mentoring relationship, a two-way street of both learning and capabilities. And even though he's not an official mentor for me, I have learned so much from this relationship that I can apply to my life and also to my future mentoring. I have had a few official mentors or at least ones that had more of a title such as counselors or teachers. And one in particular stands out. Frau Jackson taught high school German from 10th to 12th grade. She was a hard taskmaster. She would constantly berate us, yell at us, and even make us cry. And yet, if you ask me who my favorite teacher has been, hands down, the answer is Frau Jackson. She took a personal interest in me. She truly cared about me, and that's why she pushed me so hard. She taught me that I would never give up, that I can do what I set out to do, that I have the confidence and the capabilities to succeed. We had a closer relationship than most. I was an officer in German club, so I saw her all the time. And I even became her teaching assistant my senior year. She became someone that I could share my problems with. And she supported me and encouraged me. And because of her confidence in me, 
I continued to study the language, even throughout college, graduating from a and with a degree in German, all because of her, because of the abilities that she instilled in me and the confidence that I could do it. Even though we don't talk anymore, I constantly remember the lessons that she taught me, how to grow, how to experience life and yet persevere. And I'm so thankful that I had that relationship. Both of my mentors have taught me so much, not just about myself, but about mentoring in general. And that's incredibly important now as I switch from being a protege in a lot of my relationships to being a mentor. A mentor looks at the longer term goals, our moonshot goals, not just the short term needs of the mentee. And I have a tendency to be a little bit more of a coach. A coach focuses on shorter term goals or specific skills that they can help improve. And while there's nothing wrong with this, because a mentor can coach, a mentor needs to keep in mind that longer term goal or the larger need of the protege or the mentee. So I have to remind myself that even though I like to see something that I can help with, help with it, see the results and move forward and keep going and going and going, sometimes that's not what my mentee needs. My mentee might actually just need someone to listen to them, someone to support them. And to see that longer term goal, not just what it needs to happen right now, which is what Frau Jackson taught me. She didn't just prepare me for high school and learning how to conjugate verbs. She prepared me for college, which would be way more emotionally taxing and stressful for me. She made sure that I was gonna be able to finish what I started and I would make it through no matter what obstacle I encountered. It's what Chris does for me, being someone to listen to me, to support me. And that's what I need to do for my mentees, not just look at what they need right now in a five year, 10 year, but 20 years down the road. My mentees have, my mentors have given me the tools in my toolbox that I needed to build a better future, to grow both professionally and personally, because they were there for me, because they mentored me, because I knew them, I have been changed for good. Thank you very much, Ava. All right, Pablo, are you ready for your speech? Sure, so you can give people 30 seconds to send some oh, feedback to us. Yes, right? yes. Well, we can give a full minute. Uh, let's give uh, them a minute for uh, everyone. I Thank you for reminding me of that, Pablo. Uh, let's everyone take one minute to uh, give Ava feedback, okay? All right, that should be about a minute. So Pablo, I don't have an intro for you. I just know it's your icebreaker. So I will let you basically do your own intro. All right, yeah, this is my icebreaker of my second pass. I haven't finished my first pass, but I started my second pass to make up a little bit. So here I go. In the summer of 1988, I was riding a BMX bicycle all over town in San Carlos, the capital of the Estado Cojeres, Cojeres in Venezuela. This uh, town, that's the right way to call it, is not the quintessential example of a metropolis. At that time, it had roughly 80,000 people 
uh, 80,000 inhabitants. And I was riding my bicycle, searching for Lenin. Yes, you heard that right, Lenin, like Vladimir Lenin, the Russian uh, communist revolutionary. But not only that, I was also looking for his brother, his brother Mao. Mao, yes, you heard that well again, like Mao Zedong, the Chinese communist revolutionary. I was looking for Lenin and Mao, which they were supposed to be out there. Him, the both of them and uh, um, their friends out there to get me and beat me up. I was looking for them because the town princess, Maricela Gomez, yes, you heard that well, the town princess, it was my princess at that time. It was not the town princess, it was my princess. I was dating the princess of San Carlos. She had told me that her ex, Len, knew that I was in town and that he, if he saw me, him, his brother, and his talk friends will beat me up. I didn't care too much about that. I rode the bicycle and I was looking for them. Eventually I found them. I found them at the parking lot of a community pool. There they were with their motorcycle. And I got there, stopped with my BMX, they look at me and I say, who's Lenny? And then one of the guys gets up on the motorcycle and says, I'm Lenin. Is it true that you're looking for me because you want to beat me up? It's like, no, not really. Um, okay, are we good then? Yeah, we're good. Okay, bye. So I got on my bicycle and rode back to my princess. Whether you leave it or not, whether you have faith in it or not, life is magical. These brothers were real. This guy, there's a guy called Lenin and a guy called Mao that were out there supposedly out to get me. And this princess was real, yes, she was a princess. She had, two years before, she had won the princess uh, of the of this, uh, town fair, whatever it was. And this story is real. This is real magic realism. Maggie Bowers defined magic realism as magical events are presented as ordinary occurrence. Therefore, the reader accepts the marvelous as normal and common. The marvelous as normal and common. Think about that for a little bit. Do you like a good magic trick? Who likes to look a good magic trick or a magician, a good magician show? Yes, who doesn't? But why do we like it if we intellectually know that it's not real? Whether we believe it or not, whether we have faith in it or not, life is magical. For many years, I was a faithful agnostic. I was always based on science and facts. But I realized that living or life or living your life is not because of, uh, it's not worth living because of the things that you see, you smell, or you hear. It's, or science can explain, etc. It's about dreams, impossible goals, miracles, and most importantly, love. So how do you spell, how do you explain that with science and technology? Life, a million more times uh, worth living. If you realize that that hot water that coming out of your pipe every morning is coming out of that faucet, not because science and technology and a pump that pumps it and comes and this, it comes out of that faucet because of magic. It's magical. It's just common, but it's magical. Think about all that went into it. My fellow Toastmasters guests, recognize that little magic in your life. Just like that story that I just told, that magic realism story that seems unbelievable and absurd. That's still real and it, it was magical whether you believe it or not whether you have faith in it or not life is magical thank you pablo uh please let's uh have one minute of silence so people could write back uh feedback to pablo
All right, that is one minute. And I am going to go ahead and turn it over to our uh, table topics, who is Veronica. Hey, everyone. OK, I was so distracted listening to all the speeches that I forgot to get ready. No, oh, I got it. I got it. I am ready. Give me one second. Let me go ahead and share my screen. They were both great speeches, so <laughs> my head was somewhere else. Uh, all right. So can you guys wait? No, but I don't want to show you this. One second. Sorry, let me put this one. Okay. You just see a white screen. Can you guys see my screen? Okay. Yes. Cool. So for today, what I'm going to do is I am going to show you a scene on TV actual product. Like these products actually do exist out there. They may be random. They may be crazy. They may be normal. Who knows? So what I'll need from you, from anybody who volunteers, is give me a number from 1 to 12, I believe. No, 1 to 13. Oh, yeah, 1 to 12. A number from 1 to 12, and then I'll assign you a picture. Then you have to do a sales pitch between one to two minutes of how you would sell that product. So who would like to go first? I can go first. Okay, dog, give me a number. Let's do five. five, 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 five. Cool. The portable sauna. How will you sell this? Wow, that's okay. Okay, yeah. This is going to be rough. All right, let's do it. So everyone, I know that uh, we all talk about going to the gym all the time and everybody would love to go to the gym and, and you know, work out and then you can hang out in the sauna afterwards. But let's be honest, who has time to go to the gym all of the time? I mean, you can go ahead and walk around the block at home. Maybe you can get like a home weight set. You can do all of these things. But one of the things that you're really missing when you're at home is a sauna. Now, unless you happen to have an awful lot of money, you can't build a room and actually make it a sauna. So what do you do? I mean, you know, if you have, you know, maybe four kids at home and you only have like a four bedroom house, I mean, so why don't you get a portable sauna? You can go ahead and set this up very, very quickly. You just put it against a wall somewhere when it's not in use. Uh, it heats up, you can, uh, you know, use it to uh, do whatever saunas do, uh, you know, sweat in inside of it or whatever. So it's just a great idea, some, something to get that can still give you that good workout or after workout feeling uh, and just be an amazing sauna in a small amount of space. And that is why I think you should get a portable sauna. Yay, bravo. <laughs> so awesome, dog. Get your sauna. <laughs> All right, who would like to go next? Come in, I have some good ones in here. Okay. Kyle, stand up. Who would like to go? Kyle? Oh, this is Kyle. Yeah, I'll go. All right, Kyle, give me a number. Uh, I have a lucky number seven. Seven. Oh, this is easy. Okay, the Hogo slipper sucks. Fellow Toastmasters. Uh, I think that you've been asking yourselves, as I have, you know, it's getting to be about the middle of the summer and it's getting to be hot out. And so what do you need, of course? You need huggle slipper socks. You didn't know that you needed them, but these are the quintessential socks for your summer experience. And why? Because you see, you get hot and your feet sweat and you're saying to yourself, Kyle, that's going to make my feet sweat more. And it will. Okay, it will. But you kind of, you reach this plane where you sweat so much through the socks that they just kind of become part of you. And it, it is a transcendent experience. You haven't felt this before. You need to feel it, my fellow Toastmasters, because it is, it is unlike anything that you can possibly man, man, imagine. There is this uh, moisture enhancement plane that happens and, you know, we're working on some of the graphics for this. And when I show those to you, when we see my actual pitch board, it's going to blow you away. But this moisture enhancement plane, that's, that takes your feet from the sweaty, soggy, you know, nature of the middle of summer 
So feeling like you're in a cool ocean. And you're just, you know, uh, you're going to want to thank me, but listen, it, it's fine. You don't need to worry about it at all. I'm giving you this advice right now. The best investment that you can make this year is Huggle Slipper Socks. Thank you very much. Sorry, there. <laughs> that was awesome, Kyle. <laughs> and you at the same time. <laughs> not waiting, not looking for the graphics, though. Uh, I'd like to go next. Akio, okay, Akio, let me, I think I can do this for you. Let me get, let me get your time. So I'll do green. I don't have the backgrounds ready, but I'll do green. I'll do red, or here's a red. Now I'm looking for yellow. yellow, yellow. Hey, Veronica, if you want, I can do it real quick too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tom. All works. right. <laughs> All right, Akio. So give me a number. Uh, number five. Five, five, five. No, we already did five. Uh, oh, was already, yeah. Number 10. <laughs> 10, okay. Five minutes. The neck magic air cushion. The neck magic air cushion. What does this even supposed to do? Uh, okay. Hey, fellow Toastmasters. Have you ever wondered to buy a product which has no use, but you still want to buy it because it's cool to show off to your friends and family that this is the most amazing next technology Gen X product? Hey, you missed out on Tesla 10 years back. Hey, you missed out on uh, Apple smartphone 10 years back, don't miss out on this next big thing, okay? This neck magic air cushion is going to change your life. Our friends are going to go crazy. Where did you buy this from? Now they are going to be wondering, if you put this on eBay, I bet you are going to, you can sell this for 100X that you bought for as an antique piece, okay? So don't miss out on this opportunity, you know? Just between you and me, this product does nothing. It is a piece of trash, but it looks cool. You know, it has lights that go up uh, around your neck. It is uh, your, uh, so, uh, and we've got amazing financing options for you guys. Even if you don't want to pay upfront, we have got, uh, you know, we, we can provide financing through a lot of vendors. So go ahead, buy this product today. It's limited quantity only, okay? So uh, reach out to me for the next steps. Thank you. <laughs> that was so great, Akio. Like, you, know, you talked about financing. You talked about limited supply. So you put in some supply and demand in there. Just pro tip, you should probably not say out loud that the, your product does nothing. That's, you, you say that like indirectly, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> all righty who, who would like to go next do we have time for more timer how are we uh we are right on the edge so right on the edge. we yeah we can do one more one more, yeah. one more who would like to go i can go veronica antonio give me a number from one to third one to twelve sorry um uh, seven Seven, 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 seven. Oh, I think already someone, yeah, someone already said seven. One more. All right, so nine. Not, oh, gosh. <laughs> I thought, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Okay. It's quite funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was too <laughs> Um. Okay, so <clears throat> have you, this is not a product for everybody. And I know that. So I'm not going to come here and lie to you, try to push this to, to just all of you. Let's be clear. Some of you really, really need this. And you don't know uh, the difference when of your life, because I'm talking about your health. You don't, I mean, you're going to sleep much better. You're going you're gonna to feel more energized if you buy the Squatty Potty. Why? Because this is the equivalent 
of a highway for your intestines once you are in the toilet. That's what happens. It's, it's, it's really an incredible tool and it's amazing how, so, uh, how something so simple like this can make a huge difference in you. Um, um, humans are not supposed to go to a toilet the way we have been doing it. Forget about that. Buy your squatty potty. That's the thing your toilet needs and experience the intestine highway. That was so good. That was so good, Antonio. That was a hard product, so I'll give you that one. Props to you. Not harder than um, Kalina. Kalina, I think it was harder. Yeah, that was pretty hard, too. All righty, guys. So with that, we add table topics. I'll hand it over to the general evaluator. Thank you, Veronica. All right. We will now move into the second part of our meeting, where we'll be going through our evaluations, as well as reviewing our uh, timer report and grammarian and all of the rest afterwards. But let's get started with our first evaluation. I believe that's Michelle evaluating Ava. Is that correct, Michelle? Are you ready? All right, let's turn things over to Michelle. Thank you. Miss Ava, my mentor, I get to evaluate your speech on mentoring. I had a challenge finding things for you to work on. I think that was a very, very well delivered speech. And what, where I think that you excelled was in your face, your hand gestures. Uh, there were several times where you used those hand gestures and you told me before that this is one thing that you were working on because you knew it was going to be small. And you used things like you were going, going, going. So I like the fact that, that it's always kind of in progression and you did a push back and escalate. Um, all of those things really helped tie to the speech as well as how you managed your pace, your tone and your volume. When you spoke, you spoke with purpose. I absolutely love the fact that you did not start with a filler word. I didn't hear any filler words and you did not end with a filler word. The very start of your presentation was to grab attention and, and get everyone's attention and you achieved that. I loved the background, the wicked picture along with it. So it's not just showing, you know, dash from wicked. It really gives a feeling that you put there and as well as the background color. Um, it, it's all about feeling and that gave me that. What I would like to see different though, because we read left to right is I, I was reading and then at one point and trying to listen to, and I forgot to follow along. And then I was like, okay, there's her face. Am I supposed to go back on this side and read? or am I supposed to read this way? So that was one thing that I would change is, you know, do, should you only have it on one side and maybe a little bit smaller just so it fits there? Um, I'll let you decide on that, but that was something that kind of threw me off. And, but I'm very happy that it was, that it was there because I was able to read that and still stay with you and what you were saying and knew that there was a, a clear purpose to your speech find my timer again. Oh, my timer's not sharing this video. Hey, so Akil, are you timing? I'm sorry? I'm not showing people that don't show their video, so I can't see my timer. I was checking if Akil was timing you, I'm not sure. Oh, there he is, okay. Um, I was especially excited at how sincere your speech was. When you talked about your 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 personal struggle and and the the wins that you had with that as well, I think it was came across as very authentic. Um, again, sincere. It was very personal. It wasn't you know just you knew that that we were learning more about you and and I loved that. Uh, one thing that I saw the on your evaluation sheet, it says the purpose is to clearly define how Toastmasters envisions mentoring. And I'm not quite sure if you achieved that or not. Uh, I felt like it was more just about the, the example of being a protege. 
Um, so we may talk after that and you may say yes, but it's, it's up to you on if you feel that you, uh, if you achieved that or not, but I didn't get that tie back into how that mentoring was tied back into the, the Toastmasters doing that. And what I wrote down for challenging is outside of the, um, the words being left and right and on the sides, it was watching your eyes. You did so many really great eye gestures of when you leaned in and you were quieter. So it made everyone else lean in and listen. So I, I love that tactic that you used, but also your eyes, most of the time you were staring right <clears throat> at us and then every once in a while going over. And I almost couldn't tell if you were reading or if you were looking at your audience because of the, because it, it would only ever so often go in that direction. So I'm not sure if, if that was reading or if it was intentionally, you know, covering your entire audience, but not for me looking like you're reading left from right. Overall, fantastic job. Thank you, Ava. I'm happy to have you as my mentor. Great job. Great job, Michelle. And sorry about the confusion on the timer. My first piece of general evaluation for today is to say that I, I should have been more explicit about the timing for evaluations. So timer, please uh, time uh, two to three minutes for evaluations, two minutes green, two and a half yellow, and three, minute, three minutes red. Uh, Felt like now that was on, super long and I was still green, so I just kept going. <laughs> now on to our second evaluation. Stephen will be evaluating Pablo's speech. Stephen, are you ready? All right. Let's hear Pablo, it. thank you so much for sharing your speech with us today. First of all, you opened with an attention-grabbing story. That was a great way to grab our attention, and you had me hooked right away. And the way you linked historical figures into your uh, st in, into the story made me chuckle at first because I, I knew the, the, uh, the absurdity of those characters being linked together, but it also made me feel like I knew the characters in your story, even though I knew that it was, it was being weaved together um, in a, a fairy tale like way. So great job there. I thought that was very creative the way you did that. Then your transition from the fairy tale or the, the story into the, the moral of the story and the lesson you were trying to teach us. Transitions like that are very important. And I think you did a very great job um, with your transition. Right after the transition, I noticed your eyes started moving to your notes and um, that caused a couple of sentence restarts as well. So the one piece of advice that I would recommend is maybe putting the notes on the same screen as your camera so that you're, you don't have to look away as far. That was, that's the one thing I wanna give you feedback on. The, the rest of it is all positive because I think you did a great job. Uh, you wrapped up the story with a, with a great close. Life is magical. Your opening story, the personal revelation that you had from a logical, scientific mind, those all supported the moral of the story exceptionally well. So I want to thank you for putting together an, a very well-organized structural speech that had a great punch at the end. Great job. Thank you, Stephen. I think both evaluations today did a great job giving the speakers feedback and also a lot of good praise that was well-deserved. Now let's turn our attention to Akil and hear the timers report. Akil, did everyone qualify? Hey, uh, yes, everyone did qualify. I did mess up a little bit on Michelle's uh, timing, but... Uh, uh, so she did go, I think, a little bit over, but I don't have the stats to back it up. So we may as well give her the benefit of the doubt this time. So my bad. Sorry for that. No issue. Thank you, Akil. And it sounds like everyone qualified today. 
So please send your award ballot to Akil. We're voting for all three awards today. So best speaker, best evaluator, and best table topics. And be sure to include your second place vote for best table topics as well so that we can uh, break ties if that comes up. And I'll go ahead and follow the agenda and give my general evaluation now. I think today's meeting was really quite good, but I was disappointed. We haven't heard the grammarians report yet, but I don't think I heard anyone use the word of the day. And I was particularly disappointed by that because I felt like quintessential is in itself the quintessential. No. A lot of people use it. Yeah, I use really? it. Really? Uh, Paolo used it. Uh, Steven used it. No, I well, I guess I, I, good thing I wasn't grammarian today because I wasn't listening very well for it. Even still, I think it was a great choice of word of the day because uh, it in itself is the quintessential word of the day, in my opinion, because it represents everything that you want in a word of the day. It's a word that we don't use all the time. It's not an extremely obvious top 1,000 words in English, but it is something that comes up often enough, and it might not be something that everyone really knows all the full nuances with. So I really liked that as a choice for word of the day and would encourage anyone else in the future as grammarian to choose a word that they know they've heard a lot, but they're not quite sure they know it really deeply so that it's something that we can actually use in normal conversation. Uh, addi additionally, I think the rest of the meeting went really well. Uh, there was a lot of good Good speaking going on, lots of funny moments, although I'd say the funniest part for me was watching Ava's reaction during table topics to the various uh, sweaty socks and squatty potties and all of that. So all in all, it was a good meeting, a lot of fun. And now I'd like us to turn our attention to our grammarian, who was Doug today. Thank you. So, uh, Ava, I, I literally, the, what I exactly wrote down uh, for your speech was, nope, couldn't find anything. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's to be expected on your speaking. Pablo, you were also a very experienced speaker, and so I didn't find a lot of ums or uhs or anything like that. Uh, what I did find in your speech, and it didn't happen very often, um, there's, there's a lot of power in a long pause. But if it's misplaced, it's really awkward because a long pause is supposed to be something that, you know, the audience stops and says, what did he just say? Should I think about it more? And some of your long pauses are like, I don't know why he paused there. I don't know what was important about that. So just other than that, it was great. And you can hear my cat meowing in the background. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, table topics. I'm just going to lump this up in one sum for all of, uh, for everyone. Um, table topics, I'm glad when they're hard. I'm glad when we do something like you have to sell a product because you're going in there and you're going in blind and you just have to come up on it, come up with it on your own. That's by definition going to create some awkward pauses. It's gonna create some ums, it's gonna create some ands, and it did. And that's to be expected Plus and we have to think uh... and, and we do think we're, we're going to sometimes use some filler words the key thing is don't use them too often and just try to keep going and uh the last one for michelle and stephen um, again, the typical, there was just a few ums and uhs, but once again, nothing that I thought was out of place, nothing that I thought when it's any way, shape or form distracted from your message. And that's the key thing is if there is an occasional, um, if there is an occasional and or sentence restart, it's okay. As long as it doesn't dominate the conversation, um, it, it, people overlook it and they just keep going. It's your way of telling them, Hey, I'm trying to think, give me a second. Uh, and I didn't see anything that was distracting. At any rate, that's it for me. I will turn it back over to the Brian the general evaluator. Thank you, Doug. Akil, do you have the awards ready? Yes. Uh, so uh, for the speech, uh, Eva has got the award for the best speech for today. 
uh, great job, Eva. As an evaluator, Stephen has got the award for the best evaluator for today. Table topics was uh, really, really close. Uh, I have been trying to match the numbers. It seems that Doug has just outbid all of us. So great job, Doug. But really, really close competition. Thank you, Akil, and great job to all of our winners and everyone else who participated today. It was a good meeting, and I think we uh, have a lot to be proud of, and I think we're going to be ready in a few weeks when we have our open house. So uh, keep coming back and start preparing for that. If you know anyone you'd like to bring, feel free to start reaching out to them. It's May 13th, is that right? So in May 13th in a few weeks. Other than is that, that be virtual? We, that's not, is that going to be virtual? Great yes. Virtual yes. event, right? Yeah. Okay. Other than that, unless there are any other announcements, I think we can end the meeting. I'd like right. to know what Ryan thought of our session. Oh, yes. Ryan, you're on mute, Ryan. If you'd like to, you don't have to, but if you'd like to give us feedback, we'd love to hear it. Once you you're still on, on mute. mute. <laughs> Oh, he can't undo okay. I guess he's saying that it's not going to he happen. Send us a note. I heard that he loved it. It was great. <laughs> Best thing he's done all day. <laughs> the international cipher, okay. Right? Like, come back next week. <laughs> Keep coming. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Bye.